know, he, he got the confidence in himself that he believed that he can do that because he's been knocking all these fighters out that he's been in the ring with. You know, so uh, no knock to it. The latest news on the split between Gervonta Davis and Calvin Ford has caught many boxing professionals by surprise, and it's been a topic they've not stopped talking about ever since it was broken. Terrence Crawford, the pound-for-pound pound king, isn't so used to changing coaches so much. However, he chose to be reserved in his comments about Tank Davis and his trainer. Everybody say, you know, what they are do, you know, but Tank is in his weight class for a reason. And I don't see him come up to 147 to uh, face me. In his words, trainers and fighters issues are always there in boxing, and only them know what really is on with them. Everyone can think, but they know. Hopefully it does no damage to anyone, Terence Crawford said. Teofimo Lopez, a big rival of Gervonta Davis, was bent on finding a payday for himself against Gervonta Davis. Despite the topic at hand, Teofimo Lopez found a way to encourage Gervonta Davis into taking up a fight against him. He said, Gervonta Davis has the balls to do anything he wants except fighting the right people. He should get himself out of that drama and come fight me. I'm absolutely ready for him. I don't know. Am I ready? Why do you want that fight with Tank, uh, Tio? I mean, it's obvious. It's a great fight. Uh, it's, yeah, um, well, I don't like people saying that I'm ducking somebody. What's your reaction? When Gervonta Davis chose Lamont Roach as his opponent, Teofimo Lopez fired shots at him to condemn his decision making. Yeah, the way the way he's been fighting, honestly, is um, yeah. I mean, whoever the point for him, he destroys. Okay, now that fight. I, I think Two division champion Teofimo Lopez, who just indicated he was ready for a confrontation later this year, is among those looking for a fight. In a recent interview with Fight Hype, Lopez questioned Davis's faith in facing elite opponents. He underlined the long-standing belief that Davis has been under close control by his management, particularly citing his earlier resistance to face Vasily Lomachenko. The main hole that they have, they don't believe in themselves. How many times did they say that Tank Davis was not ready for Loma? that they had to prep him. How many times did Mayweather have to speak for Gervonta Tank Davis? I'm just speaking facts. Ain't nobody fighting for me but me. I ain't scared of nobody. Shit, Gervonta Davis ducked Loma for fucking three oh to God. four years. Um, Devin Haney. Proved that with Loma. Lopez also spoke of an earlier sparring session he conducted with Davis 11 years ago. Whereas Davis was already a professional fighter at 18, Lopez was just 15 at the time. Other than what he described as Davis's aggressive strategies in the ring, Lopez acknowledged that not much can be drawn from the experience. Notwithstanding these observations, Lopez does not minimize Davis's skills. Davis is no easy opponent, he said in a past interview with Fight Sports, but he still believes he is the only one equipped to overcome him. Devin Haney, same thing. He didn't want to fight no more. He says to call out and everything. He only does it on social media, but he never throws anything out there. Um, and Ryan Garcia was doing his social media at the time. Tank ain't a pushover. I guess the only one that can really beat Tank is me. I guess I gotta do it. Nobody else can do the job. Although Lopez has not stated a specific fight date, he has indicated another potential weight increase. Davis is supposed to make a comeback to the ring in December in Washington, maybe facing Lamont Roach, the super featherweight champion. Building up his followers. You know, and now look, look where that got him. I love it. So the whole thing is all about, man, just, uh, I'm a real fighter. That's what it is, man, the truth. And the truth hurts a lot of people, but they got to learn how to. Ryan Garcia also commented on the issue, and it was his time to repay Gervonta Davis for having his back while the world turned against him after his fight against Devin Haney. He said, I did that too, and fighters are free to do what works for them. Tank do what be he does for his reasons. Welcome to the team, bro. Ryan Garcia also welcomed Tank on behalf of Gervonta Davis. Following his first career defeat against Gervonta Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia was deserted and left alone during his post-fight press conference. Seemingly apoplectic and in stunned disbelief that Davis was the better man, the 24-year-old vowed to not only return a better fighter, but to also make sweeping changes. Just a few days after stomaching the first loss of his career, Garcia canned his now former trainer, Joe Goosen. His search for a new lead man in his corner spanned several weeks, and while rumors circulated that he would make amends with Eddie Reynoso, the California native opted to go in another direction.
With a bevy of trainers to choose from, Garcia officially decided that Derek James was the right man for the job. The 2022 BWAA Trainer of the Year has a long list of notable fighters and champions at his disposal, most notably Errol Spence Jr., the former unified welterweight champion Jermel Charlo, the ring's junior middleweight titleist Frank Martin, a highly ranked lightweight contender, and Anthony Joshua, the former unified heavyweight champion of the world. Garcia's decision to join James's Texas stable ostensibly wasn't just his own. In a post on his social media account, it appeared as though the wildly popular star sought the blessing and approval of Spence before taking the plunge. Thank you to Derek James and Errol Spence Jr. for allowing me to join the team, wrote on a social media post after bringing Derek James on board as his new trainer. Although the 2024 is relatively young, James has already helped Ryan Garcia to a popular statement victory over two months ago. As for Errol Spence, things got bad after Errol Spence Jr. relieved Derek James off his duties as his trainer, following his embarrassing loss to Terence Crawford, and they both attacked each other with lawsuits. James reported in his lawsuit that Spence made $25 million to fight Crawford, and produced a February text message in the evidence where Spence appears to concede he owed James another $2.15 million beyond the $350k he had previously paid him. In James's lawsuit, James claimed Spence told the trainer that someone named Al had told him that $350K was generous. It was not revealed if Al was Spence's manager and premier boxing champion's founder, Al Heyman. That's the key element of success in, in any sport, is having the right team. And I saw Errol at a boxing tournament. 2009, Errol fought his ever recorded the fight. Spence's lawsuit claims that it wasn't until February, six months after the Crawford loss, that James first requested to be paid 10% of the total fight revenue. The Spence lawsuit contends James was given his proper 10% of the bout agreement cut of $2.5 million, along with a $100K bonus. Thus, the Spence lawsuit claims the standard course of performance between Spence and James occurred for a 29th time. Hey, you think you're going to help out there? Yeah, I think I can help out. It was just the right time because I had said to myself that I want to start giving back. I grew up in Dallas and grew up in the board. Spence is grateful for James's longtime assistance, but is disappointed by James's recent attempted overreach to try and abstain payment beyond their long-standing agreement and exceeding the scope of the services that James provided. Childers wrote in the lawsuit, James is seeking accounting for Spence's earnings in all of his pay-per-view bouts, including his lucrative triumphs over Mikey Garcia, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, and Ugas. Spence counters by seeking $250K or less from James, along with attorney fees. For my coach, what's good? Come see me. You want to sue him? I want to okay, beat you up. Yo, facts. Facts, facts, bro. Do, 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 do. Knock out Errol. It was as a result of this that Ryan Garcia made a video where he trolled Errol Spence and promised him a knockout. In the video, Ryan Garcia, hyped up for a prospective clash, said, Yeah, Spence, got beef with my coach? Yes, what's good? Come see me. You want to sue him? I want to beat you. Facts, bro. He then continued making a rhythmic sound to taunt his foe before continuing, Knock out Errol, nice, damn it. Let's fight all of them at the same time. We'll see what happens. What if I pull that off though? Two volts one. O'Malley and Errol Spence Jr. at one time. Nice. Buddy, bro. F it, let's fight all of them at the same time. <laughs> Yo, bring them on. See what happens. Bring them what on. What if I pull that off though? And to, to this, Errol Spence Jr. has sent Ryan Garcia a 10 word reply. We make the match happen. Fools die on that day. I'm gonna be here tonight. <laughs> so uh, my weight's doing well, uh, training's going well. I can't wait, we down to two weeks, and I uh, can't wait to get the show on the road and fight. Evidently, Errol Spence isn't running from a possible matchup against Ryan Garcia, and has gone as far as telling Garcia he's capable of ending him, calling him a fool for yelling his name everywhere. In response to the controversy surrounding Ryan Garcia's alleged doping violation, fellow boxer Gervonta Davis came out swinging, expressing his support for Garcia and calling for repercussions against promoter Eddie Hearn, 
Ryan Garcia himself had protested against the findings before Gervonta Davis jumped to defend him. After posting a tweet featuring three crying emojis and LOL, Garcia briefly went live on X. Uh, I came on here to address this bull fucking shit claim that I cheated. Lies. Yep. Everybody knows that I don't cheat. You guys can see fake news, Garcia said. Fake freaking news. Don't believe these haters. I never freaking took a med in my freaking life. I don't even know how that stuff. It's the weirdest stuff ever. Supposedly they had it already, but they release it after I win? It makes no sense. I tested the day of the fight. Nothing. Somebody paying somebody. Garcia further denied wrongdoing in a profanity-laced post late Wednesday on X, formerly Twitter, describing it as fake news. Everybody knows that I don't cheat, Garcia said. The ring right. as a cheater and then come out with a victory and then they post this, you know. Again, um, these are people that um, are trying to attack me for whatever reason, but. What can I say? Why didn't they come out with this before the fight if they found it before? Why would they let me step into the ring as a cheater and then come out with a victory and post this? He added, these are people that are trying to attack me for whatever reason. I've never taken a substance in my life. I don't even know where to get substance at the end of the day. I barely take supplements. Big lies, I beat him. With Dan Raphael sharing the breaking news, saying per multiple sources with knowledge of the results, Ryan Garcia tested positive for the banned PED, Osterine in a VADA test related to the- They are trying to take my greatest victory away. Kinda sad when you think about it. Why in the world would I volunteer for a test if I planned on taking those substances? In a separate post, Garcia appeared to suggest a tainted herbal supplement was to blame for the test result. Oh, so beautiful. Me. Thank you for helping me beat Devin Haney. Should... My bad, I shouldn't have taken this, Garcia wrote above a photo of a bottle marked Ashwagandha Root. On the other band, Davis felt it was all planned to rob Ryan Garcia from his win. And, and any different, you probably look the worst. He just was a bigger, a bigger person, much slower. Davis took to social media to voice his outrage at the attempts to discredit Garcia's recent victory over Devin Haney, bluntly stating, they doing anything to take away the win from Ryan? In a show of solidarity with his fellow boxer, Davis condemned what he perceives as a concerted effort to undermine Garcia's achievements in the ring. Davis was so keen on bringing Haney down that he extended the heat to those supporting Devin Haney. Hours after the news broke, Davis hopped on X with a scathing message for the people accusing Garcia of cheating. Davis surprisingly leapt to the defense of Garcia, who tested positive for a banned substance on two separate tests taken by Veda, the day before and the day of his upset win over Devin Haney last month. He's a snake in a suit. That's all. He's a snake in a suit. Bro. In a now deleted tweet, the Baltimore native wrote, they are doing anything to take away the win from Ryan. If that's the case, banned Eddie Hearn silver poon head. Bro, go look at Ryan fight and go, I mean, go look at Ryan versus Devin. And go look at my fight versus Death. I mean, uh, versus Ryan. And you can tell that. However, Davis quickly realized one tweet wasn't enough to express his disdain. So he took another shot at it. In a following tweet, also deleted, he bashed the entire boxing world, backing Garcia while accusing Eddie Hearn of some serious stuff. Hey, 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 hey. Uh -huh. No, because I, I can't trust Eddie Hearn. You can't trust Eddie Hearn. You can't. Why are you stuck? The whole boxing world is straight sycophants. And every boxer on my timeline that claiming Ryan cheated. To hell he got to cheat for, we fought, nothing came back positive. He fought on the side Dazen with the promoter, clearly won his fighter to win and got put. Eddie is known for doing dirty stuff, wrote Davis. Hearn, who has a long-standing relationship with Haney and has frequently promoted him since 2019, did not take kindly to the remark. I mean, he blamed me? Really? The guy's an idiot, Hearn told IFL TV in response to Davis's post. I've already messaged him. Davis, it is so painful listening to this guy who, who ha knows absolutely nothing, right? And he's like, I don't know if you saw the clip. The one thing about Gervonta Davis is he really talks some stuff, but why do you delete your tweets? Can you not stand by what you say? So you want to come out and say, yeah, Eddie Hearn is a dirty guy for doing this? What the hell are you talking about? And then he goes and deletes it. So anyway, I'm really sorry, but I'm not involved in collecting Ryan Garcia's blood and urine samples. 
tank then insisted Garcia was being set up and took another aim at Hearn, to which the promoter confronted the undefeated star in his private messages. Hearn posted the DMs in which he said, you talk some stuff you do. Ryan Garcia posted his appreciation to his former opponent, Gervonta Tank Davis, on social media for the support regarding the doping issues that have surrounded him following his last fight against Devin Haney on April 20th. Undefeated lightweight champion Davis defended Ryan on the X platform in response to his B sample results allegedly testing positive for Osterine doping. Since then, Garcia's legal team stated that he had been given a hair follicle test, which came back negative for Osterine. The New York Athletic Commission, which will decide Garcia's case this summer, will have to take into account the results of the new tests. But, um, no weapon against me shall prosper. I never take a uh, steroid. My, I don't even know where to get steroids at the end of the day. Um, I barely, you know, take uh, supplements. Um, there's Eddie Hearn still seems a little angry after what Garcia did to his fighter Haney last April, but he has to deal with it. Garcia won the fight, and if the New York State Athletic Commission clears him, he'll be on top of the sport. It has to be tough for Hearn, stuck with Haney, who is going nowhere and will probably lose his next fight when he defends his WBC light welterweight title, which he arguably should no longer hold after his loss to Garcia. In a revelatory conversation, former boxing champion Tim Bradley expressed serious concerns about Gervonta Tank Davis's decision to fire Calvin Ford. Interestingly, Tim Bradley is just beginning to admit his admiration for Gervonta Davis's boxing skills, and this may be the ultimate discouragement for him. Talking about the situation, Tim Bradley said, Tank is getting mad, and this may be the biggest mistake of his career. Let's see how his next fight turns out. It wasn't until his last fight that Gervonta Davis won Tim Bradley over and he eventually had him predict a fight in his favor. Renowned for his expert views, Bradley had been watching the rise of Frank Martin in the lightweight division and has pinpointed the critical factors that played out. Come down for us. I think it's gonna be a more challenging fight than what people think it's gonna be. And, and I only say that because uh, I see a lot of... Uh... Martin stepped into the big league through this bout, and while many view his rise as impressive, it also brings about a unique set of challenges. Martin is a good boxer, don't get me wrong, but boxing Gervonta is not a walk in the park. Davis's fighting style is different, and this could be a significant problem for Martin, Bradley asserted. Bradley pointed out the potential of Davis's powerful hooks and uppercuts, creating immense pressure on Martin, who had not faced an opponent of this caliber until tonight. It's on. All the hype, this, the hype around the fight, all those bright lights. And just that presence of being in there with Tank, the guy that can punch it horrible. Handling Davis's blows is going to be a tough task. It's a whole new level of boxing. And I'm not sure if Martin is ready for this leap, Bradley added. His statement underscores the fact that Davis's knockout ratio is close to 96%, one of the highest in the lightweight division. Experience is often a game changer in boxing. Beyond just the physical prowess, Bradley also highlighted the mental aspect of the game. Davis is known for his bravado in the ring, intimidating his opponents into making mistakes. But the fact that you pop it, dog, at the end of the day, it's your responsibility as an athlete to make sure that your supplements are, 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 are uh, you know, uh... Martin's ability to maintain his composure and stick to his fight plan despite Davis's aggression will prove critical to his success. Frank needs to show his mental strength. Davis is not just going to test his boxing skills, but his mind too. This aspect can turn out to be the big difference maker, Bradley concluded. Gervonta Davis has addressed fight fans' questions online about whether his scheduled December 14th date with Lamont Roach Jr. is still going ahead. Reports last week suggested it could be in danger of cancellation or postponement due to venue issues. Just like his fighting style, Davis's tweets were direct and to the point. Interestingly, while Gervonta confirms that he is still fighting in Houston and everything is supposedly on track, he doesn't explicitly reinforce that December 14th remains the agreed date, leaving ardent fans scrambling over whether to book flights and local accommodation. Now established as a pay-per-view star, the clash for Gervonta's World Boxing Association lightweight crown hasn't really been announced in any formal capacity, leading to speculation about it actually going ahead. Davis is from Baltimore but a stateside star. Roach is from Washington, based in Maryland. The Toyota Center Texas headliner will need a big push in the coming weeks if it will indeed fulfill that December slot as advertised. 
What are your thoughts on the split between Gervonta Davis and Calvin Ford? Do you think this split will have a negative impact on Gervonta Davis's career? Or he'll just cope with it like every other challenge? What do you make of his appointment of Derek James as his new trainer? Let's know your thoughts in the comment section. And that's all for now. For the very best updates on news, moments, events, and actions in the world of boxing, stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to turn on notifications to get notified when we drop quality contents like this. Until next time, peace out.